Let's begin with some terminology. A sail set on a gaff will have four sides to it, or four edges, and will have four corners. Uh, from the top down, the top corner of the sail is the peak, and that will be lashed to the very end of the gaff. And then moving down the gaff toward where it butts up against the mast, uh, that will be the throat. And then as we move down along, uh, along where it's laced to the mast, uh, we come to the tack, which is the leading corner of the sail. Uh, and it will be where the boom butts up against the mast. And then the trailing corner of the sail uh, is the clue. Um, now again from the top down, uh, the top edge of the sail, uh, which will be laced along the gaff, is the head. And the leading edge of the sail, same with your Bermudan sail, uh, which will go up along the mast, is the luff. The trailing edge of the sail is the leech, and the bottom edge of the sail is the foot. Okay, so let's talk about some of the controls, uh, the running rigging necessary to hoist and set a gaff sail. A gaff sail will require two halyards, uh, unlike the Bermudan sail, which only requires one. Uh, one, one halyard is the throat halyard. As the name suggests, it will attach near the throat of the sail, and it will be used to pull the luff tight once the sail is hoisted and set. The second halyard for a gaff sail is a peak halyard. The peak halyard is used to tension the leech of the sail. Uh, as you can see in the diagram, typically the peak halyard will be attached to a span. And all the span does is just distribute the pull more evenly, the tension of the halyard more evenly along the gaff. Now when the peak halyard is not tight, uh, the leech will be loose and it will flop about in the wind. Um, a gaff sail in this state is known as being scandalized. And scandalizing a gaff main can be very useful, uh, not only for reefing and setting the sail, but also for maneuvering. Because it, it's a way of quickly taking the power out of the sail, or vice versa. Uh, just by pulling the peak back up, you can put the power back into the sail. A final piece of rigging peculiar to a gaff rig uh, we should talk about is the topping lift. Uh, this will be necessary for setting and reefing the sail. Of course, Bermudan rigs also have topping lifts, but with a gaff sail, you're faced with the problem that there's really no way to run the topping lift outside of the sail, unlike what you can do with a Bermudan rig, where you run it from the top of the mast to the end of the boom, and the sail will be able to work its way on either side of the lift. So with a gaff sail, you're going to want to have two topping lifts on either side, and this is so that you, you can always top up on the windward side. Uh, this is important when you're reefing the sail, because if you top up on the leeward side, then the sail that you're trying to reef is going to get all rucked up on that lift, and um, it's going to make it quite difficult to put the reef in the sail. Um, so, uh, so you want to have your leeward topping lift loose and use the windward one to top up the boom uh, while you're reefing. Okay, so now that we've learned some terminology, let's take a look at how all this works in practice. So here we are at anchor, and I'm getting ready to raise the mainsail. Um, and uh, what I'm doing right now is reattaching the peak halyard um, to the span on the top of the gaff. And the reason I, I um, detach the peak halyard is so that I can put the mainsail cover on. Uh, while I'm laying at anchor. Okay, so we have the peak halyard attached. Now, I haven't been sailing in a while, uh, so I'm, um, I'm going to need to do what they used to call slushing, uh, which is just putting a lubricant on the, uh, on, the, on the leathers on the gaff and around the mast uh, so it can slide up and down the mast more easily. Now, uh, they say the ideal lubricant is beef tallow, but I've never been able to find the stuff. Uh, so I usually use either lard or uh, right now, right then I was using Crisco. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do 
uh, when raising the mainsail is to top up. And you see I just pulled on the topping lift and it pulled the boom up off the gallows. Now I've also raised the mainsail just a little bit to get the weight of the gaff and some of the sail off the boom uh, before I topped up. Now when raising a gaff sail, generally you want to raise it with the gaff approximately horizontal. And I'll freeze the frame here. If you look closely, you can see I'm hauling on both the peak and the throat halyard together. Uh, and both of them are on two to one tackle. So that'll haul the peak and the throat in tandem and keep the gaff approximately horizontal as I'm raising the sail. And we'll keep doing that. I'll keep hauling away until the luff is tight. So here we go. Heave. And one more. Heave. And now the luff is tight. So we will belay the throat halyard. And then the last thing is to pull up on the peak halyard. There we go. And now it's peaked up and the mainsail is set. Then we'll just release the topping lift and we're ready to go sailing. But first we want to coil down and tidy up and get things ship shape here. So to tie a reef in our gaff mainsail, uh, the first thing we'll need to do is to round up, uh, basically come up on a close reach. And as you can see, the sails are luffing, and I have the helm lash slightly down. Uh, so it's trying to steer the boat up into the wind. And so she'll generally hold around 60 degrees to the wind that way. So the first step is to top up, uh, which is what I just did there. I took up on the topping lift. And then we're going to scandalize the gaff. Uh, so we're going to ease off on the peak halyard and uh, lower the gaff down, not quite horizontal, but uh, leave it about peaked up about 10 or 20 degrees. And then we're going to uh, ease off on both halyards and lower the sail. So we're not going to lower the sail all the way down, uh, just far enough so that uh, I can get that hook through the tack cringle. And uh, that's the grommet in the luff of the sail at the first reef point. And uh, so I, I got that attached. And now I'm pulling on the clue line through the first reef. And uh, that's what I'm pulling on right now. And th that line goes through the clue cringle, the, the grommet in the, um, in the leech of the sail. And uh, you can see it uh, a little better right there. And uh, so that line goes from the boom through the clue cringle back through a fair lead and then back to a cleat underneath the boom. So I pulled that tight and now the final step is just to tie in the reef points. Uh, th those are those small pieces of line you see hanging from the center of the sail. And that's merely to tidy things up, um, to keep the uh, furled up part of the sail from hanging down and obstructing our vision, and also to keep it from flogging in the wind. And the final step is, of course, to raise the sail back up. And so I'm going to start by pulling on the throat halyard. There we go. And I'm going to pull until the luff is tight. So we're getting there right now. And it looks like one more heave here. There we are. And then it pulled the boom up until the, uh, until the downhaul came taut. Um, and so then the last step is to pull the peak halyard up, which is what I'm doing right now. And voila! We now have our mainsail set again with one reef tied in it. And as always, the last step is to coil, coil down and get things tidied up and get the boat back on course and sailing again. Now to shake out a reef, uh, once again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to top up, take up on the topping lift, and then I'm going to undo the reef ties, which I just did right there. And then I'm going to ease off on the throat halyard, just enough to uh, take the tension off the luff, 
so that I can undo the hook that's going through the tack cringle. So you can see that the boom just lowered down a bit there. And it looks like I just got the tack cringle released. And now I'm untying the clue line, which goes through the, uh, the clue cringle. And so now we just have to raise the sail back up. And once again, I'm going to start with the throat halyard. As you can see, the, uh, the luff is coming tight. It's like one more pull. There we go. And then finally, of course, is to pull up on the peak halyard and uh, coil down, and away we go. So finally, um, and again, just re responding to uh, some common subscriber questions here. Um, let, let's compare the gaff rig to the more standard uh, Bermudan rig of today in terms of advantages and disadvantages. Well, the advantages of a Bermudan rig, uh, first off, which is probably evident from this video, is that uh, generally a modern Bermudan rig is less labor intensive than a gaff rig. Uh, so it's just easier to handle. Um, especially if you have roller furling and uh, if you have powered winches, um, some boats are literally just push button sailing. Um, another advantage of the Bermudan rig, and I'm sure you've heard this if you spend any time hanging around boat yards and yacht clubs and boaty watering holes and so forth, um, is that the Bermudan rig goes to windward better. And uh, this is true uh, for, for several reasons. Uh, one is the Bermudan rig is generally higher aspect, which means you have a longer luff. Remember, the luff is the leading edge of the sail. Uh, and this is where most of your driving power comes from when you're close hauled. Uh, think of, uh, think of um, a racing boat, especially uh, round the buoy racing boats like the America's Cup yachts. Uh, you'll notice their, their mainsails are just these really tall, thin, high aspect ratio sails. And that's mainly to give them windward performance, uh, which, is, which is crucial in winning races, uh, especially when you're sailing around the buoys. Um, another reason the Bermudan rig generally goes to windward better is uh, the gaff rig requires more rigging. And generally it's old-fashioned rigging, blocks and tackles, uh, which, which produces a fair bit more windage than the Bermudan rig. And uh, once the wind gets forward of the beam, all that windage is drag and it's slowing you down. Uh, finally, the hull form that goes uh, with a gaff rig, which is generally that of a, a long keel, moderately heavy displacement hull, um, will, will usually not perform as well close hauled as a, as a more modern design uh, with a deep fin keel and a spade or, or partially skegged rudder. So this leads us to some of the advantages of the gaff rig. Um, one is that being a lower aspect rig um, and not requiring super tight rigging means that it puts less stresses and strain on the hull and the fittings. Um, so it's less prone to breakages and failures. Um, and generally gaffers tend to be overbuilt anyway. Um, and uh, mentioning the America's Cup earlier, uh, I can remember several of those boats either had their rigs come crashing down or in some cases the boats actually just cracked in half um, from the stress and strain of the rig. Another advantage of the gaff rig is that it's just it's super low tech. It's just sticks and string, blocks and tackles, uh, which means that it's, it's, more, um, it's more likely you'll be able to repair or jury rig something. Uh, in, in case of failures when you're very far from home and have only the materials you have on board available. And a final advantage of the gaff rig is that once the wind gets aft to the beam, the gaff rig is more powerful and it's also better balanced. Uh, a high aspect ratio rig is hard to keep balanced on the helm uh, when the boat begins to heel over. Um, and generally a, a gaffer will be, if it's well designed, will be nicely balanced and quite powerful off the wind. Uh, gaffers really love, really love broad reaching. And finally, in light airs with the gaffers, you can fly a topsail. And, uh, you, and if you put the topsail up there on a big jack yard, you can get, you can get a pretty big, uh, pretty big piece of cloth up there. 
uh, made out of made out of fairly light lightweight material, and um, that'll give you a lot of warmth and, uh, when the winds when the winds go light on you, and um, gaffers can ghost um, phenomenally well. Some gaffers can ghost along at just phenomenal speeds in in, in very little wind. And one final advantage of a gaff rig, and this is just in my own opinion, um, gaffers are just freaking cool. I mean, uh, they're the result of centuries of evolution in ship design. Um, they come from the days of commercial sail, uh, when men put to sea to earn their living, um, not to just go out and play around. Um, and they went out at all seasons of the year, spring, summer, winter, fall, and all kinds of weather. So their vessels had to be had to be stout and seaworthy. Um, which is why I think whenever you see a well-designed, well-built gaffer uh, sailing past you, uh, she has that unmistakable imprimatur of the sea.